okay uh, good morning everyone so i will just go back and quickly revise this process of dna replication uh, so that uh, we whatever we will do will be in continuation with it so yesterday we had looked at these different steps which are involved in the mechanism of dna replication first one was activation of the deoxyribonucleotides so in this specific case there were uh, monophosphates of the deoxyribonucleotides they were getting converted into triphosphate with the help of enzyme phosphorylase which conducts the process of phosphorylation right and this was obviously with the help of atp then the second step was the recognition of the initiation point where the uh, origin of replication or the initiation codon they were recognized which is nothing but the 100 to 200 base pairs uh, at the starting point of oge and this uh, nucleotide base pair they were specifically localizing this protein which is specific initiator protein called as dna a and it will go and bind to this uh, origin of replication now after dna c sorry dna a is located at the ore c what will happen is it will further accumulate or localize this histone like protein which is bacterial histone like protein and then ultimately it will also invite helicase enzyme which is dna b to bind to each strand of the unwound dna so that separation of the uh, dna strands will be done by these helicases so it's like helix and breaking of that helix is uh, done by the uh, helicase and then another protein which is dna c will unwind the dna bidirectionally and will create two replication ports uh, as of now when we had looked at the diagram of the replication port we had seen only one replication port uh, we will see that uh, in terms of how does it happen in eukaryote maybe in today's class so then the topo isomerase one and two they will come into picture they will not allow uh, the st two strands of the dna to recoil again so they will release the tension so that is the function of this topo isomerase one and two then the next stage was the formation of rna primer on the uh, dna strand which is done by this rna polymerase which is dna directed right and then using this uh, like primase enzyme the rna primer will be formed on which the dna template will be formed because of the dna polymerase so dna polymerase like we said cannot initiate uh, dna synthesis on its own so it will act only and only if there is rna primer formed it cannot start the dna replication on its own so that was the function of the uh, primase and the rna primer and then obviously dna polymerase 3 will cause the polymerization or addition of the nucleotides or nitrogenous bases uh, as per the sequence in the complementary strand then this uh, triphosphate molecule will be further broken down by the release of pyrophosphate which is double uh, or two phosphate molecules joined together and this action is facilitated by the enzyme pyrophosphatase and which will ultimately release the energy and the same energy is utilized for the joining of the adjacent nucleotide to form the sugar and uh, the phosphate backbone uh, of this particular newly formed dna strand and again this action is catalyzed by dna polymerase 3 and this has a specific requirement of the magnesium and manganese uh, atoms now that was uh, quite uh most of it and of course this we know that 5 prime to 3 prime uh, it will always start and so on so now moving forward from there uh what we are supposed to look at is the formation of this leading and lagging strands of dna now uh so like we know dna polymerase can only act in 5 prime to 3 prime direction and not of the parent Uh, dna strand but of the newly formed strand right so again these things might get confusing over the time because which one acts in 5 prime to 3 prime which one goes in 3 prime to 5 prime all these things you need to remember 
so dna polymerase can only act in 5 prime to 3 prime direction of the newly formed uh, uh, like dna molecule or the daughter dna molecule what we call it. now if this is acting only in 5 prime to 3 prime direction then for this another strand of the parent dna molecule the only reaction that can happen as and when the unwinding of this DNA is happening, it has to go in this direction, DNA synthesis, but that direction is 5 prime to 3 prime of the parent strand. And if the uh, uh, newly daughter, new, new daughter DNA molecule is supposed to form, it would have in 3 prime to 5 prime where the DNA polymerase cannot act. So that is when there is another strand which is formed, which is which we call as lagging strand. So DNA polymer is still act in 5 prime to 3 prime direction, but in a reverse manner. So the, you can see the arrow is being shown here. And in this other strand, which is a lagging strand, DNA polymerization happens in the reverse direction, but in pieces. And that is why it is also called as discontinuous or lagging strand. So how exactly that we'll see here. So uh, DNA polymerase can polymerize the deoxyribonucleotides in 5 prime to 3 prime direction that is from the fifth carbon end to the three carbon end of the sugar molecule. So that is 5 prime has a phosphate group, 3 prime has a hydroxyl group. So that way they will always keep adding uh, the nucleotides to the three prime end. So it goes from 5 prime, it will add to the 3 prime, again it will add to the 3 prime. So from 5 prime, it is going on to 3 prime direction. Now in leading strand synthesis, it occurs in 5 prime to 3 prime direction, which is like a, a, a regular mechanism what we had seen so far, using the 3 prime to 5 prime strand. I, I hope because I'm using this 3 prime, 5 prime every now and then, I hope it is not getting confusing at all. Just try and imagine or maybe keep this diagram in front of you so that it will be more and more clear. Uh, so uh, yeah, so it occurs in 5 prime to 3 prime direction using the parent DNA strand which is in 3 prime to 5 prime uh, direction. Now the leading strand is synthesized as one piece. That means whole of the stretch of leading strand will be synthesized in one go. And the process allow the rapid synthesis of almost about 1000 nucleotide per second. Now you can imagine how fast that addition would be. 1000 nucleotide per second. So within a second, 1000 nucleotides are already added. So if it is a stretch of let's say 60,000 or so uh, DNA uh, base pairs, within a minute, whole of that replication of the DNA in the leading strand would have been finished already, right? So that is the general uh, idea of the leading strand. Now the trick is with the lagging strand. So what happens with the lagging strand? Now because the DNA strands are anti-parallel and the new strand must be formed on the parent strand, the replication of the three prime to five pi strand on five prime to three prime strand takes place uh, in 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So this UB is in, where is it? Yes, in 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So what does this mean is like irrespective of the replication, uh, sorry, irrespective of the uh, which direction the parent DNA strand is, DNA polymerization or DNA replication will happen in only 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So that is what is the meaning. And then whatever uh, strands are being formed, they will be joined by an enzyme which is called as DNA ligase. We'll see that a bit uh, later. So this strand will be formed. So let's say uh, uh, at the 5 prime region, your DNA A will come and bind. Uh, then DNA B will come and bind. DNA C will come and bind. A topoisomerase uh, one will uh, cause the uh, or release the tension from this strand, which is pink in this case, and uh, the DNA polymerase will come. Uh, sorry, uh, first primase will uh, form the primary RNA primer, and then DNA polymerase will come and create a small strand. Again, 
in the and then it will again break open because it cannot go on continuously in the reverse direction because there will be always uh, end. So let's say first this molecule is formed from five prime to three prime direction and then next part of DNA is kind of unwound. So then this will form. The next part of DNA is unwound. Then this will form and the next part is unwound and then this part will form. So that way, whatever part is unwound in the DNA, that much of the DNA stretch is formed. And then what happens is there will be certain gaps at in between the nucleotides here. Gaps in the sense, the two nucleotide molecule which are present at the lagging strand break, they may not be attached. And that is where the action of DNA ligase come. Ligation means addition, right? So DNA ligase will actually patch the two uh, lagging strands uh, together so that it can form a continuous uh, strand of the daughter DNA. So therefore, the synthesis of three prime to five prime strand is slow. This leading strand happens thousand nucleotides per second. Same cannot happen with the lagging strand. So you can imagine this strand is replicating much faster than this pink strand. And the reason being because it has to form this in uh, parts. The replication has to happen in parts. And plus the DNA ligation has to happen at the end. While there is no action of DNA ligase required in this case as such. Right. So that is what uh, is being said here. The process of the lagging strand synthesis is slow and uh, these short segments, they can be of different sizes. Let's say, for example, 1000 to 2000 nucleotides and they are called as Okazaki fragments. And they, why they are called Okazaki? Because they were uh, identified by this Raiji Okazaki and Suneko uh, Okazaki. These were husband and wife couple researcher uh, and they had identified this uh, three prime to five prime synthesis. I mean, uh, like three prime to five prime uh, direction of the synthesis in the lagging strand. And that is why these fragments which are formed. So individually, this is one Okazaki fragment. This another one is another Okazaki fragment and so on. So that these are what the Okazaki fragments are. Uh, now, when we talk of whole of this process, right? Uh, so the synthesis of each Okazaki fragment begins with the RNA primer, like in case of regular DNA replication in the leading strand, how it always starts with RNA primer, which is synthesized by the primase enzyme. And then uh, further polymerization or addition of nucleotide is done by the DNA polymerase tree. Uh, as it happens in the leading strand. Same mechanism happens. Now, the synthesis of the lagging strand of DNA is continuous and needs one DNA polymerase 2 and one RNA primer for each Okazaki fragment. So, again, I will go back to diagram. So, this whole stretch, like from this 5 prime end of the newly formed daughter molecule to 3 prime end, will need one uh, DNA polymerase, uh, then one primase and so on. One, one molecule of each. If they are required in duplicate or so, or like that hexamer thing, obviously that will be one unit of it. But that is like one uh, one uh, portion of or one unit of each of those enzymes or protein. In this case, for one Okazaki fragment, one unit will be required. That means one protein uh, of primase or one protein of helicase and so on. Right? So, for one Okazaki fragment that will be, for, for next Okazaki fragment, there will be another molecule of DNA polymerase, another molecule of helicase that will be required. So, that is what is again being said in this one. And then the following additional steps happens com uh, compared to the lagging strand, sorry, leading strand. So, leading strand, I hope we are all clear with, in addition to that leading strand replication, what happens uh, with the lagging strand is these are the additional steps. First one being the excision of the RNA primers. Now, once a small segment of Okazaki fragment is formed, the nucleotides of RNA primers, they are removed from the 5' prime end by the action of exonuclease. So, let's say 
For example, again I'll go back to diagram. The starting stretch of this arrow like thing. Let's assume that this is the DNA molecule or uh, this is the one of the Okazaki fragment that formed first. So at the start, obviously there will be RNA primer molecules. Let's say the first uh, whatever few base pairs, uh, they are the RNA primer in the first Okazaki fragment. Now, when the DNA synthesis happens, you remember we had to remove those RNA uh, nucleotides and they have to be replaced with the DNA nucleotides. So that way, uh, this, uh, what we say, the nucleotides from the RNA uh, will be removed by the action of exonuclease. Exo means uh, kind of um, breaking down uh, of the nucleic acid or the nucleotides. So that is what is the exonuclease. So there are two type of nucleases. One is endonuclease and exonuclease. We will see what they are. Uh, so this is the exonuclease activity and this is performed by this DNA polymerase one itself. So DNA polymerase 1 will go and bind uh, to the start of that first Okazaki fragment. <clears throat> it will remove the RNA primer uh, or those nucleotides which were joined to start the DNA polymerase action. So they will uh, get removed by the action of DNA polymerase 1. Remember DNA polymerase 3 is the one which will keep adding the nucleotides uh, at this start. So uh, and DNA polymerase 1 will act in the exonuclease manner so that it will remove those RNA primer and then they are replaced with the DNA nucleotides again. So this both the action that is the exonuclease activity as well as replacement of those RNA primers with the DNA nucleotide both of these they are conducted by the DNA polymerase. So again I will go back to diagram. Let's assume there is a stretch at this uh, start of the arrow point, uh, which will be RNA primer. This will be removed by DNA polymerase 1 and it will be added, the new nucleotides will be added by the DNA polymerase 1 itself. Why? The rest of the Okazaki fragment that was already synthesized by the DNA polymerase 3, right? So the small action of the exonuclease as well as replacement of those nucleotide is polymerase 1 and the rest of the Okazaki fragment is polymerase 3. This particular formation in the leading strand is also DNA polymerase 3. So uh, that is the action of DNA polymerase 1. Uh, joining of this Okazaki fragment. Now the fragments are formed. Like I said, First fragment is formed, next part of DNA is unwound, then second fragment is formed, next uh, part of DNA is already unwound. So it will keep on going in reverse direction, but it makes stretches in the opposite direction. That is what is lagging strand. Now, in that case, what happens is, now the gaps which are left between the Okazaki fragment by the removal of RNA primers, they are filled with complementary deoxyribonucleotides with the DNA polymerase 1. And finally, the adjacent ends of the Okazaki fragment, they are joined by the action of DNA ligase. So like I mentioned earlier, ligase is the enzyme which adds or joins the neighboring fragment. So that means, uh, sorry, here. So these two fragments, so first Okazaki fragment and sec second Okazaki fragment, they will be continuous, but then there will be gap between uh, these two nucleotides which are at the ends of these fragments. So that will be ligated together by the action of enzyme DNA ligase. Okay, let me take a pause. Any question here so far? Akshay, Pranavi or Mansi, anyone has any question? I hope this part is clear. Yes, sir. Okay. So, just the additional step is the reverse direction, formation of Okazaki fragment, action of DNA polymerase and DNA ligase. These are the additional steps involved in the lagging strand DNA synthesis. Now, after both of these strands are being formed, there is something which is called as proofreading uh, or 
the DNA repair. Now proofreading, we all know, like we have, let's say, typed a particular draft in English essay or whatever speech or whatsoever it is. And then we read through it and then we clear out the mistake. That is what is proofreading. The same analogy is applicable in this case of uh, DNA uh, replication. So once the DNA is synthesized, the proofreading has to happen. That means to check whether the complementary base pairs, they are attached correctly or not. So the specificity of the base pairing ensures the accurate replication. But wrong bases, they do enter in the new chain during the synthesis. And again, this is related to either the protein was not functional well or the enzyme did not do its activity properly or uh, a modified uh, version of the uh, nucleotides they are present and they were more reactive than the regular ones. All these possibilities that can lead to certain wrong bases attaching to the complementary strand during DNA replication. So DNA polymerase 1 will identify and replace this hidden, uh, sorry, forbidden bases. Forbidden means which are not required there. They are wrongly put there with the correct nitrogenous base pair. And this process is proofreading activity of the DM polymers. Now, even these forbidden base pairs, uh, they are introduced in the DNA helix due to the mutations. They are identified because in the complementary strand, it cannot have uh, like wrong pair, right? So that is when the action of these enzymes, DNA polymerase enzymes, that will check those mutations and those will be subsequently removed by the endonucleases or exonucleases. Uh, endonucleases, uh, so, okay, let me show you that also. Uh, I hope I'll find a, a little diagram to explain that. So endonuclease and exonuclease activity. Images. Is this? Uh, not sure. Not this one either. Okay, yeah, this is the one, right? So the action of endonuclease is within the DNA molecule, right? And action of exonuclease is at the terminal. So that is the major difference. And this diagram is just to show you that how the differences. So when we were talking of that RNA primer, that was the action of exonuclease. Why? Because the Okazaki fragment has the RNA primer at one of its end. That is majorly phi prime end. So that is when the exonuclease action has to happen. While the action of endonuclease will happen if it is somewhere in between. That means within the DNA molecule. So that is when both of these enzymes, they will be required uh, depending on where the mutation is or where is the mismatch of that particular nucleotide. If it is at the terminal ends of the DNA molecule, it will be the action of exonuclease. If it is within the DNA molecule, somewhere uh, in between, that will be the action of endonuclease. Now, the DNA replication is said to be semi-discontinuous. Why semi-discontinuous? Because obviously, uh, it can be either unidirectional or it can be bi bidirectional. Depends on uh, which molecule, eukaryote, prokaryote, and there are several such uh, distinctions. But it is semi-discontinuous mainly because of the lagging strand, right? Again, Okazaki fragments that happens in uh, pieces. Also, the replication of the eukaryotic DNA occurs at several points. Uh, so what we saw was only one DNA replication fork, right? This was a representative diagram. But when it happens actually within the uh, eukaryotic cell, it happens like this. So the stretch of DNA molecule or one chromatin fiber is too long, right? So it cannot wait to start at one end and then whole of the DNA polymerase will go throughout the uh, length of the DNA molecule. That does not happen. Instead, what happens is uh, at each of these uh, starting points, let's say at the center, 
this uh, first uh, what was that molecule uh, the origin of replication was identified then dna a will come dna b will come dna c and then whole process goes on so that binding of those replication starter proteins right whole of that complex will happen at several places like you can see here three different uh, uh, like starting points they have been indicated these are called as replication ports or multiple replication ports and starting with which the uh, each of the replication port will start with its own replication in both direction so multiple replication sites and the dna replication happening in both sides so for example if it started let's say at this arrow point so this one will go in this direction the other one will go in this direction now you can imagine this let's say this upper strand is 5 prime on the right side and 3 prime on the left side so that means this is 5 prime to 3 prime direction so that way this one of them will be lagging strand other one will be leading strand same will happen here uh, if it is going in one direction it will be lagging strand and leading strand and then they will be joined together by the action of dna ligase and of course the proofreading will happen with the help of dna polymer so that way what at the end you will get is this final two daughter dna molecule you can see they are almost about to merge uh, with each other and then they will end as soon as they reach uh, towards the end and then they will stop the uh, dna replication process those protein complexes will fall off the dna they will go into the uh, i don't know mostly they get degraded but sometimes they can also be reutilized depending on what cell uh, type it is and what ultimately you get is the this dark one dark blue is the parent dna strand and light blue is the daughter DNA molecule. So that way you get two daughter DNA molecule uh, along with one each of the parent DNA molecule. So that is how the eukaryotic uh, DNA gets uh, replicated. Okay, again, any question here? <clears throat> so I hope this part is uh, clear as well. Uh, now the last part uh, of this DNA replication uh, process is the enzymes which are involved in the DNA replication. We have seen this uh, quite in detail, but just to summarize whole of this action, uh, we have uh, like this enzymology, which is like study of enzymes in the DNA replication. So that uh, we will see here. So this was identified by this guy called Arthur Kornberg in somewhere 1957, which uh, in which he identified different proteins as well as enzymes required for this DNA replication process. And whole of this uh, total complexes of the proteins and enzymes that is called as DNA replicase system or it is also called as replisome. Uh, replisome or DNA replicase system is nothing but all the enzymes which are involved in the process of DNA replication. Not only enzymes but also the proteins. So it includes DNA polymerase 1, 2, 3. Uh, DNA ligase, which is an, uh, also called as polynucleotide ligase. But remember by the word meaning, ligation means addition. So that means it is supposed to add to uh, fragments or join to fragments. Exonuclease, uh, then number of uh, proteins called as helicases. Uh, again, we have seen this, what is the action of helicases, which is DNA winding proteins gyrases and topoisomerase. So ideally, if I have to tell you, uh, these three proteins, helicase, gyrase and topoisomerase, sometimes they are used interchangeably or sometimes uh, they are like, we know the structure of the chromatin is too complex. So when the first unwinding happens, that is the nucleosomes getting little separated, that is one particular enzyme. Usually it is uh, gyrase or uh, gyrase, which will unwind the whole of the DNA. Then helicase will kind of unwind the helical structure of the DNA and topoisomerase will release the tension of the DNA molecule, which are the separated strands. So these are the three different uh, enzymes. But for at this level, you can call them kind of interchangeably as well. But like I said, first will be the action of gyrase, which will separate the nucleosomes with the DNA. 
then the helicase will act will remove the separate the strand and topo isomerase will act on this individual strands of the dna and then it will also release the tension so these are the actions of three enzymes primases we know it acts uh, in the uh, formation of the rna primer which is nothing but uh, dna directed rna polymerase because it is a rna primer so obviously it is rna synthesis so that short stretch stretches of the rna uh, which we call as rna primer they are built up by this primases dna b which was one of the uh, protein involved in the uh, like which was nothing but the helicase type of action of the dna b which will bind and it will not allow these two strands of dna to fall back uh, into uh, again the forming the hydrogen bonds so that was the action of dna b and then one thing that we have not seen is this single strand binding proteins but if you remember that video video showed some small uh, dot dot structure uh, like let's say now nucleotides are not visible let me see if i have that diagram okay i don't i don't have the diagram uh, but let's say uh, on this molecule there are nucleotides so when these strands are open or separated what happens is the individual strand of the dna molecule is relatively unstable because it might just form loop or it might binds with itself uh, or uh, it may not allow the dna polymerase and all the other proteins to bind to itself so to keep it in that position there are these molecules which are called as single strand binding proteins so the single strand binding proteins uh, they have some other name as well which i forgot okay i don't remember oh yeah single strand stabilizing protein so the action is to stabilize the whole of the uh, dna molecule so that particular stretch of the single strand of dna molecule has to be relatively stable until the newly formed daughter dna molecule is formed on it so that is the action of all these enzymes now specifically if we look at these three different enzymes which is polymerase 1 dna polymerase 1 2 and 3 polymerase 1 we know it is involved in the proof reading and editing role right that means it will remove the mismatch base pairs and it will also remove the uh, rna primer because of its exonuclease activity right and then it will add the polynucleotide uh, to that particular uh, dna strand dna polymerase 2 is also involved in the proof reading but it will fill the gaps of the polynucleotide formed due to the mismatch pairs so the difference between these two is this one is involved in the removal of the rna primer and filling those gaps polymerase 1 polymerase 2 is involved in the proof reading of the whole dna uh, strand but only of those mismatch base pairs so one is acting for the rna primer replacement other one that is the dna polymerase 2 is acting for the mismatch base pairs which will again be removed and replaced with the correct ones so that is the one and two and obviously the dna polymerase 3 is just the elongation which is the addition of the dna nucleotides along the length of the replication process so that is the action of polymerase 3 and this polymerase 3 is also called as replicase uh, in some context so that is the uh, action of different enzyme uh, okay any question here in this part i hope you are clear with the actions of each and every uh, enzyme uh, especially what you need to remember is mostly in most of the cases the difference uh, is asked like how is the dna polymerase one different from two and from three so what you need to remember there is one is specifically involved with the rna primer exonuclease activity and replacing those rna primers with the dna nucleotides two is specifically involved in the mismatch that is or, or even kind of mutation that is dna polymerase q and three is the regular uh, replication enzyme which is polymerization uh, of the nucleotides
Okay, so uh, I assume there are no questions. So the last part that we'll see for today, uh, which is kind of a start of the next process after DNA replication, is the RNA transcription. Uh, so we will not start off this transcription today, but at least we'll have a basic understanding of this from this diagram uh, or this slide. So we know DNA is repository of genetic information. It carries the hereditary information and so on. All that we have been studying for long. Now, from this DNA, a single stranded RNA will serve as an intermediate molecule between DNA and protein. So if you look at this particular picture between DNA and protein, there is this RNA molecule, which we commonly know as messenger RNA, right? That is what will carry the information from DNA to the protein synthesis. So that particular RNA, uh, mRNA, is single stranded. So that is why that SS. And this process is called as one way flow of information because from DNA, the information is being passed on to RNA and then to protein. So that is one way flow of information or this is called a central dogma. It is also called a central dogma of molecular biology, uh, central dogma of genetics, central dogma of uh, cell biology and so on. So there are several such additional uh, like suffixes, but that you can ignore totally. You can simply call it a central dogma. That means a central process of the cell around which everything else revolves because proteins are the main components of the cell for whatever physiological action it has to do and that is when central dogma is called so and this was obviously proposed by this uh, Greek guy uh, from that Watson and Crick couple uh, not couple uh, uh, partners or researchers uh, in 1958 so what exactly happens uh, in this that we will see in the process of RNA transcription, at least the first part. First, uh, before that, we have seen this process of replication already. So we are moving on to the next step that is the transcription. Now there is something called as reverse transcription. Right? Now what is this reverse transcription? Like we already know there are RNA viruses or there are RNA tumor viruses specifically. Right? Uh, or they are also called as retroviruses because they ultimately uh, from RNA to DNA that synthesis happens. That is reverse of this. So retro, that is going backward. So they are retroviruses where the RNA is the hereditary material. Now you would simply imagine why not RNA to protein synthesis directly happens? Why it has to go back to DNA always? So that question we will answer next time or if you want answer right now, maybe I will answer it at the end. <coughs> but that does not happen in natural course of action. Most of the DNA viruses from RNA, they will go back in the synthesis of DNA. Then that DNA will again synthesize the messenger RNA and that messenger RNA will form the protein. So that is the uh, ideal uh, procedure. So this DNA is synthesized on a RNA template with the help of RNA dependent DNA polymerase. Remember one thing, when you might get confused again in the context, like when to use RNA polymerase, when to use DNA polymerase. When DNA is synthesized, it is always DNA polymerase. When RNA is synthesized, it is always RNA polymerase. So in this case, we specifically call this RNA dependent DNA polymerase because DNA is synthesized from the RNA molecule. And this particular action is what is called as uh, reverse transcription and the enzyme which is involved there is reverse transcripted or this uh, RNA dependent DNA polymerase. Uh, and this process where the RNA to DNA synthesis happen that is called a central dogma reverse. That means it's going reverse and then uh, moving forward in the uh, natural course of action. So that is what uh, is being uh, so there is central dogma which is one way flow of information and then there is central dogma reverse which is inverse flow of information or reverse transcription process again uh, any question here okay so uh, i guess I'm done for today. Uh, if you people have any specific questions or anything to ask, you can ask. Uh, next class on Tuesday, we will start with the 
transcription of RNA uh, in the next uh, like process in continuation.